and they have to hear them say, I'm really saying that they get fans of the night. And they can just kind of get consistency throughout, like not being in this case of music of it. It's the best thing, it's the best thing, it's the best thing, it's the best thing, it's the best thing. science extravaganza of awesomeness event right here before your eyes. Now, because this is a science theme event, I thought I would do a, uh, I would do a science experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to light a fire, put it in this bottle, and then it's going to create a vacuum because it'll suck up all the oxygen, and then that'll suck the egg into the bottle. Okay? Don't believe it. You can't start a fire in here. <laughs> yeah. But okay. I'll play with Just a match, not a cigarette. Am I allowed to? Maybe I should actually try. Science. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 All right. I don't think I'm allowed to do that. I'm going to light the thing on fire. So I'm going to do a demonstration of um, applied kinetic energy. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Science! Oh. Amazing. Now, our first performer, once I get this, um, this stage cleaned up a little bit, his name is Dave Roman. He's the author of the New York Times bestselling graphic novels X Men Misfits and The Last Airbender Zuko Story. He's the creator of Agnes Quill and the co creator of Jack's Epoch and Team Boat. His latest work is Astronaut Academy Zero Gravity. Please welcome Dave Roman. So I'm going to need volunteers from the audience, so if you're interested in volunteering, think about it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll call you up in a second. Uh, noted. So, <laughs> so first, a little bit about Astronaut Academy. Uh, as we all know, the future of education is in the outer space. Uh, why? Because Astronaut Academy will be uh, the futuristic school with uh, the most reasons to attend, and it is tops with the learning. I am going to try to speak louder, but this microphone is not working, so I apologize. Uh, and for some reason, uh, this is like an automatic, which is not good, um, <laughs> because I need to control it. Uh, try putting it on presenters. So, um, some of the classes at Astronaut Academy include Advanced Heart Studies, Anti-Gravity Gymnastics, Wearing Cute Hats, Fire Throwing, Run-On Sentences, and Locker. And some of the teachers at Astronaut Academy include Mrs. Bun, who is a rabbit, uh, Mr. Namaguchi, who is a magical elf, who may or may not be magic, but is still handsome, and Senor Panda, a Spanish-speaking candidate. 
<laughs> and the sport of the future is fireball, which involves kids wearing giant X suits and shooting fireballs at each other with uh, fire flippers slash lacrosse sticks. Um, and in the future, biophysics have advanced to the point where humans can't hold multiple hearts. So much like in a video game, as long as you have multiple hearts in your body, you can survive uh, any scenario. And this thing is still totally unordinary, so this, uh, this show is going to go out of control on a constant basis. Uh, so I apologize. Okay, so I need two volunteers to help me read um, to perform these two characters, Mayumi San and Maribel Melonbelly. Mayumi San is the nice girl at school, and Maribel Melonbelly is the rich, snotty girl. So, first off, I need a rich, snotty girl. And I see the guy with the tie who really wants to be the rich, snotty girl, so come on up. This is what I was born to play, the role. <laughs> We all have a rich, snot, snotty girl inside of us. It's a little flat sort of guy. So I'm going to pass the mic, um, whatever you're trying to ask. And then we need one more volunteer uh, to before Oh, Amy, up. Oh, you have another volunteer. Come on up. Uh, I'm just going to tell you about your name, if you don't know you already. My name is Maribel. No. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Greg. <laughs> So, um, I think the key is just going to be, we're probably all going to have to like, line up, I think, over here so that we're not blocking the screen, but that we can also read the screen, and then we can sort of pass it along, like so. So I'm going to play the teacher, uh, a friend, and sort of the incidental characters, and you guys are going to play these two characters. And we will start now. Ready? Let's go. Oh, and I should make sure the volume is turned up on this, because supposedly it his music, but um, got the speaker thing. Yeah, okay, so, <laughs> so hopefully it'll work out. Okay, let's do it. My name is Mayumi Sam, and I go to Ashton Academy. Woo! Okay, class, today begins your dinosaur driving lessons. Boring. <laughs> I guess it pays, since she's the daughter of a wealthy business tycoon. Well, rich people often make big mistakes. I would love to see her fall on her face with this smug. Oh, Miami, you are so mean, but in the best way, which is fun. <laughs> Enough jibba jabba! It's time to pick your dinosaurs! Hurry before they become extinct again! <laughs> <laughs> On the moon! Wow! So we need to choose from! We need to find a side for me! Okay, so Say it. 
because this contest has to be official so the world can know that legally I am the best. <laughs> the best. <laughs> oh, okay then. Let the race begin now. Ha ha! That's my winner's laugh. Which I do not believe he does. 
based on his choice in clothing, which is poor. <laughs> Money is not everything, especially when you are too rich to care, like me. Ka-ching! Ka-ching! You wouldn't have a hobo, right? Please say no, or I will have to gasp for air while I stop being your friend. Save your breaths, for I still have high standards. But since this new boy is so mysterious, we know <laughs> nothing about him. I couldn't help it. I couldn't over. Uh, I couldn't help it over here because I was eavesdropping. But did you say you're interested in knowing more about that boy over there who just transferred here? <laughs> yes, but oh. He's not a hobo, is he? <laughs> that boy is no hobo. That boy is Hakata Soy. <laughs> and how exactly do you know him exactly? You're not an ex-girlfriend, are you? I hope you're not, because that would mean you are now my enemy! Back up, sister! <laughs> No, it is nothing like that conclusion you have just jumped to a complete inaccuracy. My story is less romance-based, and instead, rather heroic. Oh, good! Then I will enjoy listening to it more, now that we are clear that have no reason to you. A few years ago, on the far-off planet of Hoppatoon, I lived happily with my family in a peaceful city. When suddenly, in the, sh in the sky, strange birds appeared. Chirp! 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 Ow! Tap, <laughs> And started to attack us until we hurt pretty bad all over. Which made us really sad. All the people of the city tried to unite to overcome the wicked menace, but knowing only peace and snacks for so long, we were ill-prepared for battle. Anybody know how to use a gun? No way! Those things are dangerous! I've got a butter knife. <laughs> chirpy, chirpy, gee! <laughs> wow! What a depressing story! Especially the part where those evil birds killed you! You must stink being a ghost, huh? Wait, don't tell me. I'd rather not know what happens. <coughs> I am not a ghost, because I did not give up the ghost, a phrase which people use to describe dying. It does not apply to me, since I am still alive. And if you let me finish my story, you understand why. Oh, fine. But it would have had more impact if you had died. No offense. Back to the flashback. All the people of Hoppeton marched towards their aggressors, only to end up burned by the flames of defeat, which you scorch like, ow! Retreat! My brother kept me safe with all his running, which was quick as a bunny, and managed to get a message out asking for help. You have successfully posted. On the other side of the galaxy. Space Hero Message Board. Topic. Help me! Whoa! Bunny's in trouble! I must call all my friends who have transforming robot vehicles. Tyke! Gadget! Tub! Princess Boots! <laughs> <laughs> awesome sauce! <laughs> Greetings, Meta Team. This is Wolf Leader. Do you read me? Loud and clear, Captain. What seems to be the trouble that only we can put a stop to? 
bunnies under attack from some foreign invaders dressed like birds with lasers. Sounds like the freaks who go by the moniker Gotcha Birds. Them again? They are so close to becoming recurring villains who keep showing up at bad times. Fools? What do they got against bunnies? Don't they know how cute they are? Especially when they hop around. Good point. I love those long ears and the way they eat the carrots. That's why we have to stop those birds before there's no bunnies left. Somebody's got to have cotton tails and eat those healthy snacks. Looks like they saw us coming with their beady little eyes. Chirp! <laughs> Chirp! Chirp! <laughs> ah! Might have used his stupid beak to tear into my truck. All that chirping is so offensive. Chirp, chirp. Especially since it is a racial stereotype to assume that birds all chirp the same way. I think now would be a good time to combine our, our efforts and our vehicles. Yes, I agree. Let's do it quick, since these fake birds deserve to be stopped. Meta team, it is officially mecha time. Transform into Metador, please. I'll form an arm. I'll form another arm. I'll form a leg. I'll form another leg. And I'll form the head, because man, do I love to say that. Those vehicles transformed to Metador. Defender of intergalactic robot enforced justice. Damn it, chirp! Does this mean we have to stop zapping the bunnies? Chirp! Not yet, rather it means it's time to transform ourselves into this. <laughs> hey, where did the birds go? And yuck, what's that? It looks as if gotcha birds have transfigurative technology of their own, which means we must stop them before they use it for evil instead of community service. <laughs> Attention bird brains! We're giving you a chance to stop before it gets too late. Mega roar! Then you leave us no choice. Activate blazing muleta! Toro! Toro! Make a roar! Make a roar! Stop with the repetitive nonsense and answer a serious question. Why do you attack bunnies when you know they are completely adorable? Because that's what birds like to do. But you do not know as much about birds as you think. Birds and rabbits are really not mortal enemies, except when pushed to the limit. <laughs> Look up there! Those creatures are fighting over us! Oh! That's so Matador! Come on, buddies! Help us defeat this jerk! Whoa! What a motivational speech! I've never heard anything like it! I feel so moved! Specifically to violence! Bunny chop! Pow! Bunny! Kick! Whoop! Buddy victory! We did it! We did it! Let's say it twice because it sounds so nice! Thank you, Metatine, for inspiring us to fight for ourselves. We couldn't have done it without you. No problem, though. You are my hero because you are the leader, and that includes nice hair. Take this medallion. Anytime you need our help, just press it and say the word, Arr! We'll come running when we get a chance to. Precious. And I still keep the medallion to this very day. Oh my gosh, I don't believe it! Well, okay, I did consider selling it once, but that was to pay for tuition. Not about your overly sentimentalized necklace. I'm reacting in shock to that. No good me, you me putting moves on my man! <laughs> hey, Papa! I wrote that vintage video game I mentioned in class yesterday. Uh, for real? <sighs> Her contact makes him contaminated, so now. so that I now think I'm totally over him. But 
He's a hero. I'm kind of sad. I, I kind of saw he saved the lives of my people. Yeah, well, he's friends with Miyumi san. He is dead to me. Who would have me? And round of applause for all our volunteers. Thanks, everybody. And up next, I'll do it. presentation queued up. Oh, is that it? Is it done? That was quick. Like lightning. It's a crack operation we run here. I've said it before. Um, you ready? I think. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, our next uh, presenter is Jim Adebiani. He is the premier author of graphic novels about science. His work includes Two-Fisted Science, T-Minus Race to the Moon, and Levitation, Physics and Psychology in the Service of Deception. But his latest work is Feynman. Right there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jim Adamiani. Thank you. Is the mic close enough to my mouth? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think so. Should I, does this work? No. Okay, I'll put it close to my mouth. I did a book about Richard Feynman. He is a physicist, but he was a little bit more than that. He was, in addition to being a Nobel Prize winner, he worked on the Manhattan Project, creating the first atomic weapons. He was a safe cracker. He was a bongo player professionally, an artist, gallery artist professionally. He wrote a number of best-selling books. He was an adventurer. He gave seminal lectures and influenced the course of nanotechnology, supercomputing, and near the end of his life, he worked to discover why the Space Shuttle Challenger blew up. In short, he kind of got his fingerprints all over the 20th century. So I wrote a book about him. Uh, I did it with Leland Myrick. Myrick, I always say that wrong. Leland Myrick. And I'm going to do a less interactive reading than days because I was not prepared and I don't know the parts uh, well enough. And, although I really should get somebody up here who has a super thick Brooklyn accent because while Feynman spent most of his adult life elsewhere, he worked really hard, I think, to retain the far Rockaway accent that he grew up with just because it was so incongruous with being a Nobel Prize winning physicist. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably simulate it with my crummy faux Brooklyn accent, which is more by way of a Chicago, Detroit, Midwest thing, which is what I've got. And that really just means dropping all the THs and using Ds instead. Uh, so I'm gonna read a little bit, a bit from the very first part of the book, which is Feynman's Secret Origin. So this is the important stuff, and we move from 1923 to 1986, and over there we say, 26 feet, can you imagine? So what does that mean in the real world? Obviously this is not a literal retelling of Feynman's life. It means a Tyrannosaurus Rex is as big as our house, yeah, and it could look right into this window. Without a ladder? Without a ladder. And its head was so big, it couldn't fit through. So there's young Richard having a look at the real window. What does Tyrannosaurus Rex mean? Oh, it's just a name, really. It means Tyrant Lizard King, but it's not really King of Lizards. And what are kings anyways? Just guys in fancy clothes. My father, by the way, in case you hadn't guessed this, Feynman narrates his own book. It was really nice of him to do that. 
My father, Melville Feynman, didn't always get the details right. In fact, he may not have even called the T-Rex by its proper name. He was a uniform salesman, not a scientist. And they don't... Can everybody, people can't see that. And they didn't stand 26 feet tall, at least in the, as far as we know today. Thank you. <laughs> and obviously we skip forward in time because we've got the Richard Feynman of 1987 talking. But he got the important stuff right. How to observe nature. Ways of thinking about nature. The spirit of it. The spirit of science. And I found that very exciting. From him I learned we can imagine that this complicated array of moving things, the world, so-called, is sort of like a great game of game played by the gods, and we're observers. We don't know the rules. All we get to do is watch the play. If we watch long enough, we may eventually catch on to a few rules of the game, and we call these rules fundamental physics. But even if we knew every rule, we still might not be able to understand why a particular move is made, merely because it is too complicated and our minds are limited. It's the same with nature, only more so. Here Feynman is obviously tugging at his wagon with the ball inside. What, Rady? Why does it keep moving that? Well, the reason the ball keeps moving, rolling, is because it has inertia. What's inertia? A very good question for you. That's what scientists call the reason the ball keeps moving. But it's just a name. Nobody really knows what it means. If we know the rules, we consider that we understand the world. This is fine again. Now that was a lot of years ago, and things haven't changed much since I was a kid in Far Rockaway. We still don't have, have them all. Maybe someday. I discovered a few rules myself. It took a lot of work, but it was easy because I found it interesting and exciting. And this is the first section of the zoo called Root for Risk. You see, from the very beginning, I always fooled around with mathematics and physics. I played, really. Mom. All the time he plays. He says he can't decide whether to be a scientist or a comedian. But how can you let a child like that have a laboratory? And what does he do? Well, it was chemistry last month. And this month, I think, Rady's fixing radios. And doing some stamp collecting. Well, stamp collecting, I approve of. But chemistry, he might blow up the house. That's foreshadowing, by the way. So a little bit of sound effects. And that's what we get with the ladies playing bridge. And this is mom closing off that first section and saying, it's worth the risk. Many years later, and what we used as a quote to put on the cover of the book, this is his mom again. <laughs> and that's fine. Community Bookstore, which is a wonderful local bookstore down the street. You should support them, and, and by support I mean give them money. And uh, you should also give money to the bar, the way station. Special thanks to them for letting us do this. And uh, thank you all so much for coming. Here.